what is up priest planet it is the tarot priest back with another pick a card reading and in today's pick a card reading we are going to be focusing on what do they secretly want to tell you in the community poll i asked the next video that you guys wanted me to do and this was the top voted request if you did not see that poll don't forget to click the notification bell so that you can receive all the notifications for when i post in the community or when i go live and do q and a's i want you to think about that person and then choose the deck that resonates with you or that is pulling you towards it. Some people have two decks. I usually just go with one, uh, but it's really whatever you feel like you're resonated or pulled to. So just pick the deck that you feel like is really calling you. We have deck number one, deck number two, deck number three, deck number four. And before we get started, a few announcements. If you do want to book a more personal in-depth reading, you can find that information in my description box for a link to my services. Also, if you have not clicked the notification bell to receive all my live streams, I went live two times last week and I noticed that a lot of you guys aren't getting the notifications. You guys were emailing me about that. Don't forget to click the notification bell so that you can see when I'm live and post all videos. Then I've also created a Patreon account, so if you guys do want to uh, become a Patreon and support all the endeavors that I have going on or get free readings per month, then you can certainly do that. And I'm also giving away a free question, which I will post down below. Last but not least, I will be doing a tarot education course one time a month. It'll be a live stream, and it's basically to teach you guys how to read tarot and oracle cards. A lot of you guys have requesting... Uh, questions such as how did I get started or how do you read tarot? So I'm going to be doing that monthly if you do want to become a priest prophet is what I call it You can find that also in the description box below So let's get started on today's pick a card reading. What do they secretly want to tell you? If you chose deck number one, this is your reading if you just jump to this deck a few things before we get started If you want to book a personal reading or you want to tune into my live streams, which is where I do live Q&A's free question giveaways or become a supporter or even learn tarot all that information is in the description box below don't forget to comment this deck if it resonates with you okay so your guys's message for what they want to secretly tell you is embrace through each other you find the missing pieces and these are the first three cards So basically, I feel like with this person, uh, they come across, it could be a male or female that you're inquiring about, but they come across as very stubborn, very stoic. Um, they're seen in the community or by others as a leader. They could be a father or a mother, but whatever. they're very good at parenting if they are parents. Um, and I say that because they're a leader, they take care of what they need to take care of. Usually the king of swords is a leader of some type of uh, visionary and I also feel like they're not just a talker, they're actually a doer with the magician. This person can come off as very intimidating, um, having all of their shit together, basically having the independence, but what they wanna secretly tell you is that they've manifested you into their life. So basically, this means that they have been uh, praying or asking the universe to send a specific type of person and you happen to be that person with the star card. Um, this person may have went through challenging times, but I feel like they still have hope. Uh, they could be an Aquarius with the star card here. They don't have to be. Um, but I feel like with this, it's there's a mystery to your guys' uh, coming together. But the, the thing that this person is not telling you because they're so stubborn and they're so, I don't want to say prideful, but they just come off as very stern and very hard to read. Um, so what they secretly want to tell you is just that they've manifested this and they're looking for the fairy tale that you're probably looking for or seeking as well, but they're not going to say that obviously because they hold this demeanor of King of Swords demeanor. Um, they're very good at manifesting, making things happen. They could be very grounded, very level headed. Uh, they have their, like I said, they have their shit together. They know where they're going. They know the direction that they're going and they're taking. And um, I feel like sometimes it could be seemingly hard to trust them because of their demeanor, but I feel like they're trustworthy. They just play this hard uh, hard shell to protect themselves. It's, a, it's more of a protecting mechanism, but for the most part, this person does want the same thing that you want, and that's what they would secretly tell you. So let me see what our next cards are. We have the Ten of Wands, the Two of Swords, 
and the judgment card. I feel like this person also wants to tell you that it's hard for them to um, open up or communicate because they have a lot going on. Um, some of the things that have happened in their life that have taken course, they have not planned it with the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is usually like a completion to an ending, but it's overload. As you see, he's carrying a large load. And also with many decks, you'll see that this person who is a Ten of Wands literally has the world on their back. So this person is very highly like looked upon, like in the community or whatever they do. Uh, people acknowledge him for that, but I feel like they're looking for someone which they manifested and it could be you they're looking for someone to kind of take that load off like they don't want to be in a relationship with someone who's going to add to the things that they already have um also with the two of swords i feel like they're they have trust issues they don't trust people very easily um and so i feel like they do trust you and they have hope that it will go somewhere um, they're, they have deep hope that this is what they've been praying for, that you've been the person that they've been praying for. And so with even with this card, Embrace as the overall energy, embracing through each other, you find the missing pieces. You guys are basically the pieces to the puzzle that one another is missing. So while this person, I feel like, uh, could be very stressed out, under pressure, they could be a director or manager at their position, some type of leadership or authority in what they do. They could be in volunteer or charity, whatever they are in. They're looking for someone to kind of ease that and bring peace to their life. And I feel like they feel that way about you. <sighs> also, like I said, with the Two of Swords, I'm getting like indecisiveness only because of things that have happened to this person. So they have a hard time opening up to you, telling you how they feel about you. And um, I feel like sometimes they waver back and forth between if you're the right person for them. But for some reason, you came into their life. Like what I'm getting is this connection that you guys have. You don't understand it exactly right now, but I feel like it will start to unravel and undevelop or develop, but unravel in a sense of understanding that this is a transformation to a much greater purpose. Um, you guys could have a soulmate connection. So if a few of you, and you can comment down below, if you met this person and you got an instant chemistry, like it just an instant type of pull towards this person, it is certainly divine and destined for right now. So this timing is not like something that's just random. It could be a soulmate. And I only say that because the judgment card and the star card is here. And usually when someone's going through this type of transformation, either they separate or the universe, God, whatever you believe, will send the person into their life to help them through the transformation. So I feel like you, um, and obviously they're not going to tell you this, they are um, keeping up this hard demeanor to protect themselves and to also kind of play the part. Like everyone sees them as uh, this strong person. And so being vulnerable is something that's not as easy as it is for you. But I feel like you're going to soften them up. And what, what they like about you, what they don't tell you is that you bring peace and you also feel like the missing piece that they were manifesting. So I definitely get that as, with the judgment card. Okay, so the judgment is usually like a spiritual transformation, a wake-up call, going through this. I feel like you are the missing piece. I feel like they also know that. That's what they secretly want to tell you, uh, that they've been manifesting you, that they're going through a lot, but you ease it in a sense, that they have trust issues, that they want to open up to you, but they don't know how to do that because they don't know how to be vulnerable without feeling like they're going to get hurt. So that's kind of what they want to tell you. Um, here is the second oracle message. Acceptance is the key to inner peace. At times, we must accept things as they are. There's no point to try to change that which is beyond our control. So I feel like with this, you guys may have both went through some challenging relationships that uh, make it hard for you to trust easily. Like I said, if you have a hard time trusting this person, it's just that it's not that they don't want to open up. It's just that they're afraid of getting hurt again. And I feel like you guys kind of have the same. Um, you guys could certainly be twin flames for some of you or soulmates. Because I just feel like that the reason why you guys are in each other's life right now is 
for some type of divine purpose. It's not something that's shallow. Like it's not lustful. I know we don't have any cup cards. I feel like it's all and we don't have um, any earth cards either. We have fire and air, lots of fire and air energy. So you can also have fire and air in your chart. But I feel like this is um, a way bigger purpose. And so with the acceptance is the key to inner peace. I feel like this person has accepted the things that have come in the past, but you're allowing them to open up. And that's what they would secretly want to tell you is that you're making it easier for them to open up and they see you as being the one or the person that they want to settle down with. But it's going to take them some time to make that decision. But they're certainly manifesting that. They're just, again, they're holding on to a lot. And so just accepting the things that is, um, there's no point at, point of trying to change that which is beyond our control so there's no point of trying to speed up this process just allow this to unfold and then let's just read your oracle message of guidance if you've chosen deck number one so yours is believe strange encounters that's insanity i don't ever flip up these cards so i don't know what what i'm gonna get um but i just feel like this confirms everything it's strange encounters it's like I feel like I've the, the energy that I get from this person in you, like what they secretly want to tell you is that they feel like they've known you forever. You guys might have a past life connection. I said you guys could be twin flames or soulmates. And it's just, I feel like this happened so rapidly that you're just like, what the hell? Like, what is it? What is this? And, and am I the only person that feels this way? Because this is very strange at how fast our chemistry is and how fast things are going and how fast I feel like you could potentially be the one. So let's see what strange encounters are. All right. Believe. Do you know, I always thought unicorns were fabulous monsters too. I never saw one alive before. Well, now that we have all seen each other, said the unicorn, if you'll believe in me, I'll believe in you. Is that a bargain? So basically when Alice and the unicorn meet in through the looking glass, neither of them can quite believe what is taking place. For the unicorn, humans are legendary, particularly human children. He never quite believed they were real and thought them to be famous monsters. This could be taking a place in your life at present. You could be meeting people whose experiences are most unlike those you've had lust for. You may be encountering spirit beings or mystical events that make you wonder at this very nature of reality itself. Once you have experienced the strange reality of people unlike yourself or of spiritual or of spiritual encounters with guides, visions, or prophetic dreams that leave you marveling at the universe, you can no longer deny the existence of such things. This card asks you to accept that others unlike yourself exist. They will then accept your differences too. In this way, we can be begin to believe in each other and live side by side as different as we may be. So yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. It might be strange. It might be someone that you not, wouldn't normally be attracted to. Um, it could be just the fact that you feel this way and you don't know if they do. I certainly believe that they do. You guys feel mutually the same. You might even be mirroring each other. So if, I, if you feel like I described you in this scenario, then you could certainly be twin flames because you guys would be mirroring that. So all in all, what I think is... Don't try to overanalyze a situation. This person does feel the same way. And also what I'm getting is if you feel like this is too good to be true, this is where your embrace card comes in. Just embrace each other. Let things develop or let things develop and unravel and things will kind of start making sense. But at, at this point, this is not necessarily a logical connection. It's probably not going to make sense. Um, but yeah, that's what they would secretly want to tell you. So if you chose deck number one, I'm curious to see if this resonated with you down below. In the meantime, let's get on with deck number two. If you chose deck number two, this is your reading. And if you jump to this deck, just a few things. If you want to book a personal reading or if you want to tune into my free question giveaways for live streaming, uh, don't forget to click the notification bell to receive all live stream updates and posts. Lastly, if you want to become a Patreon or learn how to read tarot, you can find that in the description box below. So let's get started with deck number two. Don't forget to comment down below if you chose this deck and you feel like it resonates with you. What does this person secretly want to tell you? Your Oracle of Love card is playfulness. Laughter is the best therapy. Have some fun together. And remember, love is the greatest healer. So this is the overall energy for what the person wants to tell you. All right, let's see three tarot cards to start. We have the Six of Cups, 
could be someone that you were in a past relationship with. I know sometimes you guys comment and you're like, damn it, the past again. Uh, if you're inquiring about someone that you broke up with, it could definitely be, this could be your reading. If not, it could just be something that someone is currently dealing with as far as their past uh, situation as well. So I feel like already um, this could be a past reading. Either this person you've already dated, like I just mentioned, and you guys broke up. Or this person you have an instant connection with, you don't understand why, and it's because you guys have a past life history together. So you might feel instant satisfaction or some type of pull towards this person as i said in deck number one a lot of you guys inquiring about the pick a card readings especially this reading could be manifesting soulmates and so things are starting off very rapidly and the you guys are both afraid to tell each other how you feel because it just doesn't seem like this should even be happening so soon so with this deck what they want to secretly tell you is that they are whoever this person is they are probably still reflecting on the past. And I only say that because we have the Six of Cups and the Four of Cups. So we have a lot of emotions running rampage. But with the Four of Cups, this is usually someone who's reflecting, um, thinking about things that they've lost, and then also reflecting on the past. But they're open to the Ace of Wands, which could definitely be your energy. So if they just got out of a relationship, if this sounds like you, basically um, you guys could be feeling the same way so if this does sound like your situation don't take it any other way it still could resonate because again you guys could be connected and going through a similar path and journey but basically i feel like you and this person have just gotten out of a relationship even if the last relationship was months ago whatever that relationship is i feel like there's still some healing being done so the reason why playfulness is here is to take a different approach don't be so serious like your last relationship this is going to be a spark of positive passionate energy with the ace of wands here so what they secretly want to tell you is like, look, I've been through a lot of shit. I just got out of a relationship. Even if I didn't, my last relationship was kind of hectic. I'm still kind of dwelling over the things that I've lost, but I'm so open to this spark and connection that we have. And I'm so open to the passion that we have because I really feel this energy. And I also feel like with playfulness, with the wands energy, it represents love and passion. And it's a start to something. And so with the ace being the first card um the one it is the start it is the start to something so the best approach is playfulness because this relationship that one of you guys have gotten out of was so damn heavy so yeah this person would also want to tell you that they love being around you that they feel like it's finally a breath of fresh air like it's easy right it's fun we can go to the park we can go to the movies we can go to dinner we could be children again i love that about you um but I'll, obviously they have a hard time being vulnerable as well because of the things that have taken place in the past if this is someone that you broke up with and you're requiring inquiring about them i feel like they want to start all over like let's be friends again and start there so if you are inquiring from someone from the past the best approach is to just like let everything that happened go, go, let the grudges go, forgive each other and just be open to a new beginning and no, open to a new start. If you're inquiring about someone that you um, broke up with or if you've dated them previously is what I'm getting. Wow, that's a lot. <clears throat> wow, we have the Ace of Swords. Yeah, I feel like this could definitely be somebody from the past. Yeah. Some of these cards were in the reverse, but I'm just going to read them as I interpret them. Okay, so this is interesting. I, I heavily feel like if you're asking about someone that you broke up with, they are teetering between a start and holding grudges and um, basically like questioning it. Like if we start all over, can we start all over like when we first met? when it was easy, when we were teenagers or when we were younger and we were playful and we didn't take things so seriously and bills weren't an issue and we could just live life and play and have this innocence about our relationship or is it always going to be at each other's throats? Especially with the sword card here, but deck number one got the star card, deck number two has the star card. There is hope for the relationship and I feel like this person would secretly tell you that. They would also secretly tell you that they're just protecting themselves and being rude 
or ruthless because of the things that you guys have previously went through. Again, if this is someone you dated, if not, take it as it resonates, this is someone that they previously dated. So if this is somebody that you met and it's new, they're interested in starting a new beginning. However, they also have trust issues and they are not sure if they can put their guard down and allow you to come in, but they want to with the star card. Like they feel like you could be the changing factor to how they see love. They want to give you a chance, but they're just not sure if a new start is possible with the Ace of Swords. They could be holding on to past grudges or past anger with the person that they recently broke up with. Now, again, if this is you, this is certainly, they're certainly talking about you. So basically, you guys were at each other's throats. You guys are both in your egos. You won't put your swords down. Um, you, we can't just like make up and say, I love you like we did when we first met. Everything wasn't so serious. And that's what they would secretly tell you. So yeah, take it how it resonates. Two, two situations here. New love and past love. <clears throat> so yeah, if it's new, then they're definitely holding on to some things that have happened in the past. Uh, which makes sense. They definitely went through a lot. And they want a new beginning. That's what they would secretly tell you. Um, but if you look on this card, this person is watering two different flowers. Two different sets of flowers. So it's just like two different situations. And what am I going to get? I don't know. But I'm willing to open up myself and put myself out there. Because whatever it is that you have... Um, again, you guys could be soulmates or past life lovers. It's probably more of a past life if you're new or even past life if you guys have been on and off or have recently broke up because the star card is here and the six of cups is here. So yeah, basically this person just wants to go, they want to secretly tell you is like, I like it when it was, when we were in the beginning and things weren't so like challenging. Can we go back to that? All right. <laughs> wow. Deep in your heart, you already know the answer. Do what feels right. I think this is both of you. Um, doing what feels right is just putting your pride aside. Letting go of the past things if you really want this. Letting go of the things that have happened in the past. The things that you felt like you've lost. Letting go of all of that that you feel like has been lost because of the relationship. Are you willing to put, this person is saying, listen, I'm ready to put my sword down. I just don't want to put my sword down and you still have yours at my throat. I really want to start all over. I really want to get back to when we first dated is what they're saying. If this is new love, it's, I really want you to prove me wrong about love. <laughs> the person that I was with in the past, just really, we were at odds. And I don't want to go through that again. I really want the new beginning. I really want to trust that love doesn't have to be so complicated. That we could just enjoy life and have fun without the stress of a commitment. And what we're going to do in 10 years. And if we're going to get married. And if we're going to have kids. I would really just like, like to start around that playfulness. And so deep in your heart you already know the answer. Do what feels right. So it's basically following your heart and not following your logic. And that's exactly what this person needs to do as well. Um, but for some reason, I just feel like if you pick deck two, you're inquiring about someone you broke up with. I feel like most of you are inquiring about someone that you broke up with. And that's what they want to tell you. They want to start all over. But they just don't know how to tell that to you. They know in their heart that it's the right thing to do. Logically, they feel like it doesn't make sense. Why would I want to be with this person? They hurt me. You did this to me. I shouldn't even want to. But it just feels right to follow my heart. And this is what they want. And... The only way they're going to tell you is if you make the first move by opening up and being vulnerable. And I know that that's a risk, but somebody has to be willing to take the risk for love. That's what I'm getting with deck number two. Let's see what your oracle message is. Follow the white rabbit. Following the white rabbit is also following the truth and also like following, your heart, following your heart. We all know what the white rabbit is from the matrix. I think I got this in another one of my readings. Curiosity meets opportunity. <laughs> I totally see that. Like, approach this differently with playfulness. That's the best therapy. And that is a perfect message for this group. Okay. 
Something out of the ordinary happens nearly all the time. Most days, if you are aware, awake, and ready for adventure, there will be an opportunity to change your life. Before this to take place, you must follow the white rabbit. You must go after whatever it is that excites you, inspires you, and entices you. The white rabbit does not go to Alice and ask her to accompany him. It is up to her to notice what has taken place. Be awake and aware. Wonder at what will happen next. And when the extraordinary takes place at the heart of the ordinary world, be ready to leap to your feet and run toward enchantment and adventure. So if you pick deck number two, you might be thinking, yeah, right, this person does not feel this way, but they do. So you have to follow your heart and follow your excitement so that you can see where the curiosity will lead you. That's what I get for deck number two. If you chose this deck, I'm interested to see how it resonates with you. Until then, on to deck number three. If you chose deck number three, this is your reading. Uh, before I get started, if you just jump to this timestamp, I just want to let you know if you want to book a personal reading or if you want to tune into my live streams where I'm giving away free question and answers, don't forget to turn on your notification bell. Last but not least, you can become a supporter of Patreon and become a priest prophet by learning tarot as I will be teaching monthly webinars on how to read tarot. All right, let's get started and see what's in store for deck number three. What do they secretly want to tell you? Oh, this one had two, three cards. This was a little bit more complicated. <sighs> Look inside yourself. Examine what is causing you to feel this way. Sacred union. Honor and treasure your relationship for it is truly sacred. Let's see what you guys got going on here. Queen of Wands already. Passion. Nine of Pentacles. Some sort of stability. And the Tower card. Hmm. It's so crazy because I feel like if this is someone that you just met, what they secretly want to tell you is that you are just too damn good to be true. But it's because you guys have a sacred union. You're too damn good to be true and they're just waiting for things to fall apart. It's like it's too good to be true. She's so grounded. Um, or he. You could be a he. Gender is fluid here, obviously, as the spirit has no gender. But it's like you encompass all of these great things. You are able to handle life accordingly and differently. And this is all the things that they would tell you. And you're so grounded and you have dreams and you want to do things with your life. And you love the luxuries of nature or the luxuries of life in general. But damn it, when is this going to end? Because it just is too damn good to be true. Um, look inside yourself and examine what is causing you to feel this way. If you're questioning why it is that I feel like this is for both of you actually if you're questioning if this is too good to be true if you feel that way then you guys are also both mirroring each other so you guys do have a sacred union honor and treasure your relationship for it is truly sacred and I would say honor and treasure your friendship as well as it is the foundation of the relationship it's kind of what I'm getting here also what they want to tell you is I just think that they're afraid of things falling apart um, and so the best way for them to understand, it's almost like they feel like, why do I deserve you? Like, you want to love me? Why? Why do you like me? Why do you want to do these things? Why are you so amazing? Why are you such a goddess or a god? Um, you know, you encompass so many great things. And that's because they don't feel worthy. And that's why the look inside yourself is here. Also for you looking inside yourself. And what's causing you to feel this way? Doubting the relationship. I feel like you might be doubting this person. Um, but yeah, it is confirmation here that it is a sacred union. So I feel like this is just pretty cl uh, clear as day. You know, with the Queen of Wands, she's a manifester. She manifests things. She makes things happen. She could be creative. She has a lot of passion, a lot of spark. Um, very intuitive. With the Nine of Pentacles, this is just admiring the luxuries of life having some type of foundation um, also just creative as well creative energy and then the tower card usually just represents some something falling into place or falling out of place um, it could be a disaster it depends on the perception of it but I feel like in this direction it's this person being afraid of what is going to happen because it's just too damn good to be true all right so let's see what we got here yeah, you know, this card is in reverse. I'm going to read all of them upright. Um, but it's important that I understand that because counterpart energy, like I said, it's a sacred union. I mean, I don't see these cards before I flip them up, but it's so fun to see them 
and um, to confirm it. Like it's a challenge for me to not look at them previously. So counterpart energy, um, obviously king and queen. You could be two females, two males, doesn't matter. Also with the six of pentacles, it's just so perfect. You give to me like nobody has ever treated me the way you get treated me is what they're saying about you. What they secretly want to tell you is that everything I pour into you, you pour back. It just flows. And it's so crazy because it's on the nine of pentacles. <laughs> wow, this is crazy. All of this makes so much sense. So you guys are both manifestors. You guys want to do great things. You might even want to um, help the world or you might like serving people. Both leaders in your community, both leaders in your family could be the oldest of the siblings. You have some type of leadership. Both of you guys do. They see that about you. Um, but I feel like they question if they're good enough for you because this is in reverse. The king of wands. They're questioning if they're uh, too good enough, too good for you. Or sorry, if you're too good for them um, because they're in the reverse. And if they're giving into the relationship and you know why we have this five of swords here on the tower card is it's just like five of swords. This card is so interesting. They're fighting, but nobody's like paying attention. You're what are you fighting for? What are you trying to conjure up arguments for? Um, they're just so used to always being on the defense that they're just so surprised with your demeanor. Like you are have been that they, they feel like you have been so easy to please like it, there must be more i must be missing something that's what they would secretly tell you um they adore you they admire you they look up to you um and they also look up to your courageous like how courageous you are how you're able to take on things and and so diligently um how you're able to manage the disasters that come in your life they admire that I, obviously they're not going to tell you I don't feel like I'm good enough for you, but that's what they would secretly want you to know is that, look, I'm still working up to this, um, but it is a sacred union and you guys have to get on that same page as far as understanding that you guys have both manifested each other into each other's life at a perfect time. Um, so yeah, all right. Let's see if they would secretly tell you anything else. I think it's pretty clear as day here. I'm going to pull another, uh, the last Oracle card, but yeah, let's just pull that. I don't really, I don't really feel like this is, uh, someone for most of you, like who have been in a relationship, but we have criticizing one another will only lead to further unhappiness, love and accept each other as you are and your relationship will magically transform. And I think that that's so crazy because I think you guys both kind of see each other the same way, but I, I, I think that questioning if this is too good to be true, um, is what has had this, uh, on a halt. And so with this person, you got to just kind of like validate them and assure them words of affirmation. Like, I love you. I love what you stand for. I love what you do. I'm just here to love you. You don't have to defend yourself. We don't have to fight. I really just want to make this work. And for the small percentage of you who are thinking of someone that you were previously in a relationship with, they feel the same way. They still... The reason why you guys are breaking up, if you guys are breaking up, is because this person has uh, some issues with security. They have some insecurities and some self-esteem blocks or blows. Um, and so they basically push you away because they just don't feel like they're ever going to be what you want them to be. They may say, you're so hard on me. You always want me to do this. I'm never good enough for you. That may be something that they constantly say. I'm never good enough for you. I never will be good enough for you. I'll never make enough money for you. Like They'll just come up with all of these excuses for really projecting their own insecurities on you for the few of you that uh this is a um, on and off relationship or if you guys broke up and so criticizing one another is only going to lead you to uh, further unhappiness so basically what's going to help this person come forth with telling you how they truly feel is if you um allow a foundation of vulnerability and comfort for them to feel safe because they're already intimidated by you and they already feel like they're not worthy of receiving you um, and so kind of, that's what I get for, for deck number three. Let's see what your Oracle message is. Set your course, know where you wish to go, have a plan, the right direction. Let's see what this is all about. So this is just an Oracle message for guidance revolving the person that you're asking about. You too may be asking yourself which way to go, which direction to head in. This can include questioning your sole purpose or asking for advice from others on what you ought to do, 
which way to take your life, what decisions to make, and what you need to do next. Once you have a better idea of your desired destination, the ambition you wish to achieve, or the dreams you wish to create, you will know what to do. Until you know that, it will be very hard for anyone to offer you any advice at all. This also applies to the advice you give yourself and the person that you are in a relationship with. Don't flail about and don't be at the mercy of other people's advice or opinions. Ask yourself what you want to create, do, and achieve, and be. Ask yourself what type of partner you want to manifest and be open to receive that partner. I just added a little bit into there because this is relevant to the love and the situation. I feel like you, the person that is in this person you deserve and they deserve you. You guys are counterpart energies. This person just needs to walk in their energy. And also don't be swayed by the opinions of others or third party outside people that have an opinion about this relationship as it is a sacred union. Let me just touch on that. If anybody has questioned you or you have questioned the union, uh, this this person is a sacred union. Look inside yourself and I feel like you will see the why this is such a sacred union and what you guys are supposed to be here to do. And then also not criticizing each other. I think that the criticism just comes from a place of protecting yourselves. Um, and so I feel like that person, if they criticize you or they say some hurtful things or rude things, I feel like it's just them projecting their insecurities. And so all in all, what they want to tell you is that, you know what, you are just amazing. And I really wish I had the security in myself and the self-esteem to actually tell you the things that I really want to tell you without feeling like you're going to use it against me. So that's what I get for deck number three. Hopefully this brings clarity to your situation. If you pick deck number three, I'm interested to see how this resonates with you. On to deck four. If you chose deck number four, this is your reading. And if you already clicked the timestamp and it just jumped you here, a quick announcement. If you do want to book a personal reading, you can find that in the description box. If you do want to catch my live streams where I'll be doing live free question giveaways, you can also click the notification bell to receive all the updates on when I will currently be live. Last but not least, if you want to be a supporter and help me continuously put out free content, you could become a Patreon and you can also learn how to do tarot if you want to be a priest prophet like me. In the meantime, if this deck resonates with you, don't forget to comment down below. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. All right, let's see what the overall message is. So with this, we have trust. Transformation occurs through acceptance. Once you accept the current situation, it will automatically transform. But what does this person want to secretly tell you? Yeah, that makes sense. Seven of Swords but is the Betrayal card, or known as the Betrayal card. The Fool card is falling. These all happened to fall into place accordingly. Okay. I feel like this is giving me past relationship vibes. Um, and I only say that because you guys have already been through some things or this person has been through some things. I will just give both perspectives. So the first one that I'm getting is you guys broke up or you guys are off and on and you guys have some trust issues. I say that without this card, I would say that Seven of Swords is the betrayal card. And also just always being on the defense, feeling like you're going to be attacked or feeling like you have to prove yourself. So this person feels that way. That's what they would say to you, that they always feel like they're under attack. Um, they're afraid to fall. They're afraid to move forward. So they're kind of putting things on a hold, but they want to move forward with you. They, If they have yet to communicate, if you are picking this deck and you have not talked to this person, they are going to make communication or they're going to show up somehow. So you might find an email from them back in the day or something with their name on it. And even if they're communicating through spirit or telepathy, they're going to communicate absolutely for sure with the Eight of Wands here. Um, so yeah, I feel like this is someone that you've been in, involved with. There was some trust issues. They don't trust you. They feel like you've hurt them. Things that you've said, things that you've done have hurt them. They're afraid to take the risk, but they want to take the risk. They're working on building that trust up for you again. Um, trust transformation occurs through acceptance, accepting the current situation, accepting that these things happened. And I also feel like this person is on, has some awakening or enlightenment to realizing that the connection that you guys do have is a little bit more deeper than they originally thought. And I feel like that's what they would tell you. Like, Hey, I have been doing some enlightenment and I've kind of evolved and I'm starting to realize that what we have is 
a little bit more sacred and I don't really want to throw it away. Even if they feel like they don't want to communicate, they absolutely do. The Fool card is known to take risks. As you see, this person has their eyes closed and they're falling and they're trusting in what? The doves? I mean, that's unrealistic for doves to catch you while you fall. So this is just a resemblance of I'm going to fall and take the risk um, without thinking about it. The Fool is just like, you know, a fool, a fool for love not logic, not thinking it through, just wanting what they want, wanting what the heart wants and letting the heart grow fonder. So this person has definitely considered the things that have happened in the past. Um, now, if this is a new person, before I get on to the next tarot, if this is a new person, they have trust issues and they're not going to probably tell you all the things that they've been through because they don't want to be that vulnerable they have trust issues based on their last relationship but they want to take the risk with you and they want to move forward very fast they feel like once they clear up some of this stuff which is not going to take long they're going to take the leap of faith in the jump and they're going to move forward it's not that they don't like you it's not like that they don't feel the same connection they seriously just have trust issues is what i'm getting Let's see what the next tarot's are. Of course, three of swords, like I said. So that's why I'm saying you guys understand why I say, like, if it's not past, I won't bring it up. And I know some of you guys are like, I'm over my ex, but look at all these swords. Swords is air energy. Not only is it air energy, but it's all about the mental trap, the mental clarity. <clears throat> Ten of Swords. Like, look at this person. This person has been hurt. So if this person is new, which I feel like a very few of you are going to actually comment down below and say this person is new, look at all the things that they've been through. I mean, look at this card alone. This is insane. Like, this person has been through a lot. They're tired. I mean, are they even alive? They're barely moving. I wouldn't know. So this person has been through a lot with the... Three of Swords, you know, the card of heartbreak. We all are familiar with that. If you're into any tarot readings, you would know that. This person would secretly tell you, let's just say the new, okay? This is someone new. They'd secretly tell you, I've been through a lot of shit, okay? I will probably be an asshole or a bitch at first because I just don't trust anybody. I feel like everybody who's coming in is trying to break my heart and I just don't want to take the leap of faith and open up to you. Um, that's for very, very few minimal of you. And you guys may be, be saying that that's me. That's how I feel. How do they feel that way? If this is you, again, take it how it resonates. This person may be seeing that and reflecting that as well. I'm a true believer that whoever we meet, sometimes we reflect things in others or project them as mirrors for us to work on ourselves. So if this is how you feel, again, take it how it resonates. Now, if this is someone from your past, which I've already said majority of you, it is going to be, they're heartbroken. You guys, didn't I say over things you said, Page of Swords is someone who communicates relentlessly. They don't think about what they say. It's the teenager that's pissed at their parent. They just say whatever comes to, to their head because they're just, they're hurt. And they don't understand um, why things are happening the way they do, so they just yap 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 at the mouth like they don't have a filter at all uh, they're very rebellious in the way that they think they don't have a filter they're very blunt um and so when they're saying things they're not thinking it through they're not filtering it through their mind and that's because they've been hurt all of this is sword energy so you guys could be dating someone who is an uh, air sign you could be dating someone who is an air sign we have the ten of swords so there is an ending they just want to secretly tell you I've been through all of this, but I still love you. And I still want to take the leap of faith and I want to move forward. The eight of wands is the communication card, fast traveling, transportation, movement, eight of wands. So they've been through a lot, but they're still willing. Something inside of them still wants to fight for this. Let's just see what the hell's going on. I look deep within my heart and you look deep within your heart and you will feel my love. My love for you is as deep as the ocean. I mean, if you couldn't have asked for a better card to sum up this, you've been through all this and I still love you. That would be the message for deck number four. I want to secretly tell you that you've hurt me. I've hurt you, but I still love you. So look deep within your heart and you will feel my love. My love for you is as deep as the ocean, meaning you can put 10 swords in my back. 
and I will still love you. This love, whew, it might even be a twin flame journey. This love is unconditional love. Like, it's beautiful. But I mean, obviously, what you guys have been through is not beautiful. It's destruction. But it's all for what? Something. There's some reason why all this is coming together. And it could be the purpose for unconditional love. So this is beautiful. Okay, let's see what your oracle message is. Law is not justice. Rules that are not fair. All right, let's see what this card means. The situation Alice finds herself in is patently unfair. No one should be judged, convicted, or served a sentence prior to the evidence being heard, but this is the situation. This could be what is taking place in your world, unfair as it may be. Someone wants to judge you before they know you, convict you before they understand your side of the story, and they most certainly have not examined any evidence. Your opinion of yourself is what is most valuable. You can state your case clearly with strength and power, and doing so will help you remember just how very strong you are, how very admired you are, how worthwhile and decent you are. You are worthy of respect, fairness, and kindness. If you are being treated poorly, speak up. When you do so, the spell will be broken and people will see that your side of the story is well worth listening to. Never allow another to steal your self-worth. So I feel like with this card, I feel like some things that have happened with you guys were unjust. And I feel like you guys both hurt each other. But at this point, it's not about what's fair. It's about the love that you guys share that rhymed anyways that's what I'm saying is that you know you may be hurt this person may be hurt but I feel like this is a matter of trusting the transformation and yes speaking up and telling the person like you've said these things these these things have hurt me and of course I still love you but I don't want to get back into this energy whatever this energy is I truly love you and I just want to move forward based on love and not of the things that we've done so it's all going to be a matter of if you guys are willing to trust each other and look deep within your heart so deck number four this is your reading if i would sum it up in one sentence it would say look you put me through hell but i still love you that would be the message and what they would secretly want to tell you if you chose deck four i really want you to comment down below because deck four you are in for a journey but it certainly is going to be a transformation of a beautiful one so thank you for tuning in and until next time